who enters his fifth season leading the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers finished with a 7-6 record overall in 2023, which culminated with a 31-24 victory in the Pinstripe Bowl. Rutgers returns 14 starters from 2023, six on offense and eight on defense, highlighted by preseason selection, Kyle Manungai. Coach Shiano, we'll begin with your opening statement. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here again. Um, feel blessed to be a member of the Big Ten Conference and at Rutgers, uh, that's something that early on in my tenure, the first time, going back to 2002, I can remember sitting in the room after my radio show with Tim Pernetti and saying, you know what, we don't belong where we are. We need to get into the Big Ten. And that started a 13-year quest. And to be in here, we feel blessed. And I, I really feel especially appreciative for Commissioner Petiti. The job he's done in a year, he and his staff, is just tremendous. So to Tony, thank you for, for everything. And I'd be remiss if I didn't thank our president, Jonathan Holloway. Um, between Jonathan and our board of governors, I've never felt like Rutgers, the university, the football program have ever been more vertically aligned. And that's what it takes, uh, make no mistake about it. From the top to the bottom, everyone has to have the same vision and I feel like we do. Part of the greatest conference in, in college athletics and uh, excited. We have three, three great players here today, Tyreen Powell, uh, Muhammad, and, um, and Kyle Manungai. And when you talk about Muhammad Ture, just a tremendous football player and even a more responsible young man, a great leader on our team. Uh, Kyle Manungai burst onto the scene last year, but we knew what we had. And uh, as good a performer as he is on the football field, he's even, even a finer young man. And uh, Tyreen Powell, I remember getting there in, in late December of, of 2019, arriving at Rutgers, and he was committed to, to Virginia Tech and going into his home and talking with he and his family and uh, he made a promise at that point that he was going to stay home and go to Rutgers. And I made him a promise that we would prepare him, develop him in, for his ability to reach his goals. And to have him here on our team now recovering from surgery and going to be ready to go this fall is huge. So three great representatives, three New Jersey kids that uh, I'm very, very proud of. Looking forward to the season. We get started here. Uh, our players arrive on Sunday and away we go. We have a Thursday night start against Howard University and uh, looking forward to that. And Again, we have a, a long training camp ahead of us and, and one that uh, we had to stay in the moment. You know, I talk to our players all the time. Uh, there's two great thieves in this world, the past and the future. And we talk about chopping the moment, chopping right now, being in the present. Well, that's what, as their leader, I need to do that. So this is a great, great entry to, to preseason camp. And uh, with that, I'll take any questions. First row here on your right, Coach. Uh, Kenneth Barry, touchdowns and tangents. Coach, um, obviously in all your years, NFL and at Rutgers, what's it been like convincing more of uh, New Jersey kids to stay home, especially the elite New Jersey kids, to stay home and uh, build up Rutgers? And secondly, in regards to just your team's identity and their football character, what's easier to kind of to fill out and identify for you going into the season? Well, first off, you know, recruiting and retaining the best players in our backyard, New Jersey and New York, is critical to our success. But it's not just New Jersey or New York players. It's the right New Jersey or New York players. And quite honestly, I don't put a lot of stock. It's no disrespect to anybody, but the rankings and all that stuff don't mean a heck of a lot to me. We had a, a player by the name of Max Melton. When I came to Rutgers in 19, Max was the 22nd rated player in the state of New Jersey. Well, fast forward four years, he was the 43rd rated player in the, in the world, right? He got drafted 43rd in the NFL draft. So how much those rankings mean, I'm not so sure. But I do know this, if you get the right players, the guys that are made of the right stuff, they're, they're a cultural fit, and they have the ability. We wouldn't be talking to them if they didn't have the ability. But once you do, you find those guys that have the ability, the hard part is figuring out, are they going to be a cultural fit? And finding them in our backyard is critical. So that's something that, is, uh, that has been going well. It's hugely critical, but something that I'm excited about. And the, the second part of your question, you know, 
who are we as a football team? I think it goes right back to our culture, family trust chop, right? And it's, it doesn't vary. It's not a saying we put on the wall. It's not a shirt. It's how we try to live. And I think it's the greatest tool that I can send a young man into the real world with family. Forget about me. I love you, right? We believe love is sacrifice, the ability to sacrifice for others with no expectation of something in return. You know, not a lot of that going on these days, right? To do that for your teammates and for your coaches, that's special, right? Trust, 100% honesty and doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. Right? Easy to say, really hard to do. And then chop what I mentioned, the ability to stay in the present moment and focus on exactly that which you have to do. Right? Don't let those thieves get you. The past and the future, they get you off your mark. And we work really hard in teaching that. So when we say FTC, that's more than something we put on our helmet or something we put on a wristband. It's a way that we try to live life and equip these guys to go out into the real world and be able to be great husbands, great fathers, and productive members of society. So if that, you know, what is our team? It's that FTC. All right. Coach Lynn Harrington with Stay Alive Power 5. How you doing today? Doing well. How are you? I am all right. So... Last season, you led Rutgers to his first winning campaign since 2014. However, with the Big Ten expanding with four teams from the West Coast, how do you keep Rutgers from being a needle in a haystack approaching this new season? Well, look, I don't try to hide from who we are or what we are. Right? We've, been playing, we've been playing football longer than anybody else on the planet, yet we haven't been playing at this level very long. You go back to the mid-'80s when we really made the jump to major college football. So relatively young – but it's time. It's time to get going. It's time to make a mark. And as I've talked to our people about, we've been filling the pipeline since we got there with quality young men, quality football players. And I believe now the pipeline's close to being full, although some of it is young still, right? We have an experienced group at the end of the pipeline. We're going to have a lot of NFL players that come out of this season. And to me, anytime we've had great teams at Rutgers, they've been made up of NFL players. And, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. I think that um, we have the guys that can lead our program. At some point in the last 18 months, it went from a coach-led program to a player-led program. And to me, that's always been where the program really begins to shift and it begins to get results. So that's what we need to do. We need to stay focused on the moment right here, but uh, certainly looking forward to, to the season ahead and the new, the new people that are coming into the league. It's just great. I've always said this, the Big Ten, why do I love the Big Ten Conference? To me, it's that sweet spot, that intersection of elite academics with elite football. That's what makes us special. And it's still college football. I don't care, you know, you talk about NIL, you talk about revenue sharing, all those things. It's college football. They're getting an education and they're getting it at some of the most elite universities in the, in the country. Dustin Schutte, Sports Illustrated. Uh, Greg, at the NFL Scouting Combine, we talked to a lot of different former Big Ten defensive players. They said that Kyle Manungai was maybe the toughest player they went against in the conference. What characteristics set him apart from other running backs or other players in this league? Well, I think you know, what Kyle does best, he has an incredible patience to view, to watch, to wait. But when he makes the decision to go, he's, an, he's a violent runner. He's violent the way he plays. He's violent with his feet and his legs. He doesn't stop. And the one thing that I love is to watch him run. I'd say 98% of the time he's fallen forward. He's fallen in the right direction. And that's a little bit of who our identity of our football team is, is we're going to get knocked down, but let's make sure we're falling in the right direction and we get up quickly and, and get back at it. Hey, Coach. Uh, Will Decker, LA Football Network. You guys made a huge jump defensively last year into the top 20 in total defense, and you returned 10 of your 13 starters from the position group. I was wondering if you could tell me um, what makes this group special and what makes you think they could build upon last year's success and ultimately have a better ranking than they did last year. Well, I do. I love our defense. Uh, these guys have been in the program now for four or five years. Uh, we're a developmental program, and I know people say that we are truly, that's what we are. Uh, we take guys and we work really hard over a period of time and they get to be really good players. And that's what I feel we've done now. Coach Joe Harris-Simiak, who's our defensive coordinator, has done a phenomenal job since he arrived. Uh, I think we have a great chemistry with the coaches and players, not only on the defensive side of the ball, but Coach Shiraka and the offensive side of the ball as well. I, I, as a head coach, have not ever been in a position where I feel this comfortable 
where our two coordinators lead those units. It allows me to do my job as the head coach. I'm very involved in special teams. And uh, certainly defense is something that I grew up on. But Joe runs the defense, and he does a heck of a job. Coach David Gold, inside and you. You guys have to travel across the country this Friday, well, one of the Friday nights this year to play USC. How does your experience as a head coach in the NFL scheduling cross-country travel prepare you for this new type of Big Ten season? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I feel fortunate that we had that experience in my time at Tampa. You know, we played the Western Conferences a couple times, and we played up in Seattle and those are long trips. Tampa to Seattle's about as long as New Jersey to L.A. So uh, certainly with the time and all those things, those are details that you work on. You use specialists to help set up your plan. But at the end of the day, you got to go out there and you got to block and tackle. you got to throw and catch. you got to play the game of football. And I think sometimes people lose sight. They get all caught up in the semantics of the trips and things. It's still football. And that's what our focus will be. Now, we're incredibly fortunate, again, to have these teams coming into our league, to go out and play our first time on the West Coast, playing the Coliseum. I've coached there before. That's a special place. So I'm, we're looking forward to that. Questions for Coach Ciano. On your right, Coach. Coach John Rhodes, Voice of College Football. About 10 years ago, a little bit over that, you built Rutgers into a huge powerhouse in the Big East Conference, and now you're here in the Big Ten trying to do the same thing. Can you talk about the way things are similar to building them back then, but they're different now? Yeah, well, I think college football is so different now, right, with the, with the changes that have happened even in the last – you know, I heard uh, one of the coaches down in the SEC said college football has changed just about every six months since he took the job. It was Billy down at, uh, down at Florida. And I'll tell you what, he's right. I mean, it's changed very often lately. And the ability to adapt, to pivot, to make changes is critical as a college football coach. For a long time, it was very, very similar. And then it, and then it made a big move. But the Big East was an eight-team league, right? And it was a good league. You know, uh, there was some really good football being played. But we're talking about the Big Ten, the best college football conference in the country. And to be a member of that, like I said earlier, it's a blessing. Uh, it really is to be a member of this league and uh, look forward to continuing to build till we get to a point where we are in the mix for the, for the championship. That's what, we're, that's what we're building for. We didn't, I didn't come out of retirement to go to, to go to a bowl game. And, you know, I came out of retirement to win a championship at Rutgers. And uh, hopefully we'll do that. Coach Ciano, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.